We have our app all localized and ready to unleash upon the world. Now we need to give our users an option to pick which language they're going to see. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at a little bit more internationalization. Uh, we've already done an episode on internationalization and we have that linked in the comments below. So this is internationalization episode number two or I18N2. <laughs> Three i 18 n n n you should, if you haven't watched the previous episode, you should definitely go check it out. But just as a quick recap, um, we did we prepared our app for localization and supporting a couple different languages, basically English, Canadian, and French Canadian. And we localized the strings in, in our controllers using the iString localizer. And then within the views, uh, we used something called the iView localizer. So those are two services that allow us to get access to uh, the strings that have been translated for different languages, different cultures. And what we want to do now is provide some options for the user to come in and actually pick which language they're going to see when they view the site. So if I run this now, run my app. So what I've done here is I'm actually displaying the current culture, so whatever is currently selected for that request. So the culture is set per request by ASP.NET Core when the when the requests are being processed. So it's set to English Canada. And what I'm doing is in the footer there, I'm just displaying the current the display name of the current culture, which I have access to by accessing the context.features uh, collection and calling get I request culture feature. So this is uh, asking for something from the, the context as opposed to injecting this directly? In this case, yes. Um, okay. I'm actually not sure if you can, I hadn't tried injecting that. I, the examples I had seen online were all doing this features.get. Okay. So I'm not sure if features work the same way and if they take part in uh, DI. I would expect that they do. Something to try out. Uh, but regardless, it gives us an instance of the I request culture feature, which has a property on it called the request culture, hmm. which I can get the, which is just a, you know, a culture information, and I can get the display name. Okay. So I'm just displaying that, just so the user knows what they're looking at, which they won't be able to read if it's in a different language anyway, because it'll be displayed in that language. Um, but what's interesting here is that if I look at my startup. Uh, when I specify my request localization options here, my default request culture is actually French Canadian. And this is the first time I come to this site and it just kind of automatically picked English Canada. And that's because uh, the way this works in ASP.NET Core, there's, there's something called the request uh, localization middleware that kind of looks at your request early on in the pipeline before MVC gets it and sets the current culture for that request. And there are a few different ways that that can be done. Each of those is called a provider. So one of those is called the accept languages provider or header provider. And that's actually part of like the browsers just support this automatically. And that is, so here in just looking at the network traffic in my developer tools, I can see that there's this request header that went out saying accept language, ENCA, ENUS, and then just the fallback English. There's no country specified. Uh, so it's kind of the order in which I'm, my browser is configured to accept languages, uh, saying that, you know, give me English Canada if you have it, if not English US, and then English. So that's why instead of the default that I specified for the application, which was French Canadian, it just kind of automatically picked English Canada. So that's one of the ways we can specify the culture. Another one is called the query uh, query string provider. So here it's grabbing it from query parameters. So if I specify culture equals frca and UI culture equals frca, then it switches me over to French Canadian. But that's a little bit messy having that there all the time. So the way I've been doing this typically 
if I take those query parameters off, it falls back to English Canada. I've been using something called the cookie provider. And what it does is you just you specify the current culture with a cookie. So what I did is I turned this piece down here to a link so it goes to a page where we list out all the supported cultures. I'm actually grabbing those. It's the same supported cultures here, so I haven't had to define that in multiple places in my application. I define that. It's part of my uh, request localization options here. Now, I notice on there that you have supported cultures and supported UI cultures. What's the, the difference there? That's a very good question. And this is something that's uh, not specific to ASP.NET. It's just all .NET applications. There's a concept of a UI culture and a culture. The UI culture is the one that's used to decide which uh, resource files to look, look up translated text in. So it's the one that you're using for, the, for that part of localization. And then the culture part is the one that it uses for the default formatting for numbers and dates. So things like uh, the comma versus dot separators for numbers and even mm -hmm. month day year versus day month year and that's that's the culture that specifies that part right because various different languages for people who might not have been exposed to this have various different separators for, for numbers so if you have a number like a thousand in english we would tend to write that as like one space zero 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 dot zero zero uh, in French, it would be something like one space zero 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 comma zero zero. So they use a, a comma as the delimiter between uh, units and uh, fractions, decimals. What's decimals? That's what I'm looking for. Uh, and then in other languages, it's even more fun. Uh, so like Spanish uses a, a dot as a delimiter between thousands. So it would be like one dot zero 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 comma zero zero. Uh, so there's lots of different options and different ways of displaying those. And that's not even talking about dates. We should do a whole episode on dates. We totally should. I've been spending a lot of time working on dates on the humanitarian toolbox already project lately. It's been just loads of fun. <laughs> Your own personal gulag. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's been a year and a half. Uh, <laughs> Back in my select language controller here where we list out those options, I'm just injecting the request localization options. That's where I get the list of supported cultures, which I'm passing over to the to the view. And in the view, what I do is I just create a little mini form. I'm in the wrong one. So for each culture that was passed in, I create a little mini form uh, that posts back to the set language action of the current method passing the culture the culture name and then back in there on the post that's where the culture name comes in and all we do is we append a new cookie to the response we get the default cookie name from the request culture provider and then we call make cookie value on the request cookie request culture provider passing in the request culture and then uh, specifying when we want that cookie to expire, so I just defaulted that to one year. Felt like I had to say request culture provider a lot there. And that's really all there is to it. To see that in action, if we, let's say it switches to French, you can see that it changed. And any subsequent requests, if I refresh that, it stays as French Canadian this time, it's sticky. And there's nothing in my query there to, to indicate that in the query string. And if we look over at cookies, we can see now that there's my ASP.NET Core.Culture, that's the default cookie name. And it's set as FRCA for the culture and FRCA for the UI culture. Which most of the time you're always going to use the same, I think, for both of those. There are situations where you might mix mix them sometimes. And Yeah, I could, I could see some scenarios if you were living in Spain, but you spoke English. Yeah, that's possible. Now, if you wanted to, by default, all three of those culture providers are active. That's just the, the default when you create new options. But if you wanted to specify something different here and just do, just do one of them, you might create a new list and say, just add the cookie provider. <laughs> 
that's one option. Another option is that you you might append a custom one here, so you might create your own. And you just add it here and it would take part in the, the middleware just like the other ones. Right, so an example of that might be if you had a, a settings page for the user, a profile page for the user, and they could go into that and set their language in there, then you could retrieve that information from the database and put it into the request culture provider here. Yeah, that's a really good example. And that pretty much wraps it up. That's all there is to the middleware part of localization. Great. Wow. Thanks a lot, Dave. Uh, I'm sure we will have many questions from people on this. So if you do have questions, you can place them down below and we will reply to those. Uh, otherwise, please remember to like, comment, and share this video. And we will see everybody on a subsequent episode. Good night.